Introducing Perf Tracks, my latest jam and lesson video bundles. Available now at perfectodecastro.com slash perftracks. Check it out. And it's super interesting that to get into a field now, music, the music is yeah. crazy now. I mean, remember when we were in, right? Yeah, when yeah, we yeah. were in, it was the, the height, the height of it. CDs, you're making CDs for 20 pesos, selling them for 450 pesos. I mean, you were making, and then the guys here weren't even spending. All they were spending was 20 pesos. They basically got a master from the States. They didn't even pay for that. That just came. Right, so these guys were making bang, and that all went away. And it's just thing I was—I I mentioned it earlier. I was listening to a podcast. Um, there were two things I did within days of each other. I listened to the podcast. I think it was Joe Rogan talking to Jacob Dylan about the music industry. And sadly, I—I, I, 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 you know, Jacob Dylan didn't know a lot, which I found unfortunate. Considering you're Bob Dylan's son, you should know a hell of a lot, and you've been around as long as we have, longer far. And then an, an article by Stuart. Uh, Miles Copeland the Third, which I should send you. It was a Forbes magazine article uh, interviewing Miles Copeland the Third, and it was very, 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 very good and highlighted a lot of things that I, I think are very important. The gist of it is um, what they're saying was, I, you know, how did it happen? That was the question. How did it happen? How did we go from CDs? and vinyl to, you know, to now streaming and, or first MP3s and then streaming. And, and by the way, the demographic now, do you know that out of all the music consumed, at least in America, 83% is streaming. Yeah. Yeah. Only 6% is download. So now you remember when we went from CDs, it was all downloads was the big thing, right? And Metallica and Napster. Napster and, and all that. Now that's gone. Now it's no. just streaming. And uh, the, the owner of Spotify wants to buy Arsenal Football Club because he has enough money, you know. But, but it's just for me, it's always been sad how the entire music industry of the world is basically run by a computer company and an app. How the F did that happen? <laughs> and, and there was an article a while back uh, about that Spotify owner then. It's like the... Yeah, see, Daniel Ek. Yeah, the, the reason... You know, the reason why uh, artists don't make enough money out of streaming. Yeah, because <laughs> they don't pay enough. Well, no. The, his uh, his uh, argument is that most artists aren't prolific enough. My ass. No, no. My <laughs> so ass, you, you, ex you expect us to come up with a classic hit every week. Yeah, no. It's... It, that's you know weekly for enough. yeah they don't pay enough his reasoning is if you do that you, you'll get paid more <laughs> bullshit about it look at look at taylor swift taylor swift's their model always went on volume okay we pay you a little bit but your you, you your reach is now how many billion so your little bit will add up and but that's not look at people like taylor swift who's probably the most streamed artist now she ain't making what she used to make you know and many those were if we're talking cds and records back in the day, cassettes, she would be much, much, much well, higher. Well, it, it used to be that you tour, you tour to support your CD, but now you're, you're, it's the other way around. You release music so that people will see you yeah. on tour. Well, this is that's the Pinoy rock way, bro. That's how we did it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how we. That's how we, that's how we did it. Yeah. Yeah. So then, to, to be perfectly honest, a lot of times, and I hate to do it, but when I read about all these guys bitching about Spotify and all this, and I'm just like, check your privilege. Ass white. The <laughs> Pinoys did that. We we live. We were living that about 20 years ago. We were doing it. 30 years ago. You know, you you put an album out, and then if it charted, your shows got bigger, and that's what it is. Your show, your 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 this CDs were advertising for your shows. You weren't expected to make money off them. The record company made money. Off them. Yeah, the artists did. <laughs> we never made money off it. No. But we, we'd always joke, like, you know, every time the royalty check would come in, like, Roy, Patrick, get me a yellow Porsche and, and sell <laughs> this one with the dirty ashtrays. I want a new Porsche, you know, and, and you, this one you can send to, you know, whoever. You know, I don't care. It's just, I'm, Brand new one. Here's the check. You know? <laughs> it's just like a joke. <laughs> yes, but, we're we're rich. <laughs> we're fine. We're socially secure. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. It's, it's so sad, but, um, dude. 
Introducing the Bad 94 Distortion, the Perf De Castro signature pedal. Now available to order from the following retailers, gcrockboard.com, guitarpusher.com, and from the official website, perfectodecastro.com. Links in the description. There's some merit to the Spotify owner's argument. I, yes. I mean, having that level of distribution, yeah, man. I mean, definitely. It's just that, come on, you got to pay more. You know how much you're paying? How much are you paying for Spotify Premium in the U.S.? This is this will this will close the argument. Yeah, then then nine ninety nine a month. Nine ninety nine a month. You know how much I'm paying in Manila in the Philippines for Spotify Premium Family Package? How much? One hundred twenty nine pesos, bro. Holy shit! Yeah. Come on, that's like what's that? Two fifty? Not even. <laughs> Not even. <laughs> Not I, even. I, I'd gladly pay nine ninety nine. It's totally worth it, man. But I only have to pay two fifty. In fact, they have they're running a promo this couple for the next couple of months. You can get two months for one hundred twenty nine pesos. Oh, so come on, you know what I mean? Yeah, Charge, yeah. I mean you're charging peanuts for it. That's yeah. why you can only pay peanuts. And 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 then for a country like the Philippines that got 110 million people, you're char- you're paying off so little. So what about all the other countries with a ton of you, you know? If you're leveraging off volume, then hey, uh, at least charge the same all around. Because then your argument, your argument that oh, but I have a lot of people, you you'll have a lot of exposure. Therefore, you'll make a lot of money. Only works if everybody's charged the same. If you're yeah. dropping the cost in different regions, you're not earning the same and your volume don't matter. It's being offset by the drop in the price. You also need to factor in the, the spending power of the area as well, of the region. I, yes, of course. Yeah. But, then, but then again, this is for premium. You know, there's the free where you have ads. So, I mean, people can get the free. It's Spotify that has to pay more. Yeah, Spotify standard and then premium. Maybe different tiers. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, that's the thing. No, but I know because I know I get all the royalty reports. You know, we're all I get all those reports. Spotify pays uh, different countries pay different rates, and I, I think that's not right. I think you should charge. I don't know how. You know, I don't know how you base that, and I don't know how. Well, that, what they could do I mean, is what but, they could do is average the income from all the all the regions and then use that as a basis for the royalties the base rate yeah maybe yeah because like i mean that, that's an idea yeah because if you if, if like us you get to charge the us more then you get to charge uh philippines less if you average them meet it in the middle and then dun ko kunin yung royalty yeah. That would be yeah, that would be right. fair. That would be fair, I think. That's that's fairer yeah, than fair. what's happening yeah. now, I believe. Yeah. That's more fair yeah. than what's happening. Dude, I'm 129 pesos, bro. Come on. <laughs> that's what I'm paying now. The, divided right. divided by how many thousands of artists? Yeah, <laughs> right. Or some how, actually no. England's UK is paying even more than you. Di, di, divide, 129 pesos divided by millions of songs. Because. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. Actually, UK, if I'm not mistaken, Denmark's paying the most. And, you know, I mean, you can't, oh, wh- wh- why is everybody paying different? Why is everybody paying different for the same service? Okay, granted, there's different content because, you know, the US has, uh, there's some things that are on Spotify US that we cannot access because of, and that's because of copyright, whatever. Yeah, DMA. Yeah, but I don't believe it's it's so much that you're going to drop us to. Well, buy. see, no, no, that's the thing. That's probably the reason why you can't access it because we're only because we're only paying 2 bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe you're right. Yeah. That's why. So so Spotify uh, averages uh, averages all the income and bases it off of that, then every everybody will have the same service. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. It's just well, anyway, it's it's funny so a- anybody, no, I mean, the most, how much are you going to earn out of the Philippines if we're only paying $2? And how much are you, you know, I mean, it's, it's crazy. And this is why you're not earning on Spotify yeah. because they just, I mean, they're not charging enough. I mean, you know, there's, I mean, the thing is they have a free option. So, you know, it's okay. If you can't pay 10, 500 pesos for the premium, then take the free option. Take the free option. Yeah. Uh, or offer, yeah, or, or offer tiers. I mean, just, sure. just I mean, make sure. At least, at least offer a higher price, higher tier. Yeah, I mean, the, the only way Spotify, the only way people 
we'll because they were talking about this huh? this is uh and so like at the and it's it's it was funny to listen to it and basically the same so american musicians are like yeah there are these really great bands this is joe rogan and and jacob yeah i know so, all these really great musicians but they, they got to have a job because they can't sustain themselves in music and i'm like yeah well, that's that's manila man that's everybody here when we've been living that for decades right so check your privilege bitches but anyway <laughs> you know what i mean but I mean, we, we've been at that. That's how we've been existing. So the thing is, but the only way to rectify that is, okay, you need to get paid more from the streaming services. They just have to pay you more. And that means they have to charge more. That's okay. There was a time we would spend 450 pesos for one CD. And everybody did that. So why can't you spend 450 bucks for a whole month of unlimited music? That's a better deal if you ask me. You know what I mean? All the songs you can listen to over and over again, you know? For a month. And you don't have to I mean, worry about probably- storage. <laughs> exactly. You don't even have to worry about storage. I mean, I bought some, you know, it's the worst is you bought like a CD where two songs are good and the rest are crap. <laughs> and you spent 450 bucks on that turkey. And you're just like, tanga na naman. Where, you know, something like Spotify removes removes that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you have, you have. Yeah, you can, you can make your own greatest hits compilation. Exactly. You can make playlists. Like I have a playlist for my daughter's guitar. Uh, music you know what i mean and it's great so i have a playlist when i work out i got a playlist when i'm at the office it's 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 fantastic <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome musta mga epektos perf de castro to at welcome sa bahay ni pekto sana enjoy kayo dito sa episode ng perf talk Break lang tayo saglit para sa ilang announcement. Ang PDC Signature Picks na gawa ng Anatomy of Sound ay available na dyan sa Pilipinas. I-message nyo lang sa Facebook ang AJ Guitar Setup or i-search nyo si Alfred Jan Garduque. Ang bawat pakete ay naglalaman ng tatlong pick at sila ay classified depende sa kulay. Ang puti ay ang soft, ang kulay flesh naman ay medium at ang kulay itim ay ang hard. Ngayon, kahit magkakaiba ang kanilang tigas, eh, 3D printed ang contours nito. Kaya iisa lang yung grip at masarap siya gamitin. Ngayon, meron tayong iba't ibang klaseng available. Ito yung regular size pick na pang gitara. Meron tayong mas malaki ng konte para sa bass. Meron ding heartbeat at heartbeat jazz shape para sa mga shredders. <laughs> at ang personal kong gamit ngayon ay ang heart attack pick. At katulad ng PDC Heartbeat Picks, ang Heart Attack ay tatluhan din bawat pakete at magkakaiba rin yung kanilang hardness. Ang kaibahan lang ay uh, hindi pa PDC branded ang packaging. Pero hindi naman importante yun eh. Mas importante yung pick mismo. Ang Anatomy of Sound PDC Signature Picks ay available dyan sa Pilipinas sa halagang 700 pesos lang. Kasali na doon ang delivery fee. Limited lang ang stocks kahit i-message yun na kagad ang AJ Guitar Setup sa Facebook. Marami na rin nakabili ng bagong design ng PDC shirts and merch mula sa gcrockboard.com. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyong patuloy na suporta at uh, ang plano ko ay eh, every month meron akong ilalabas na bagong design. So meron na ngayong available sa gcrockboard.com slash PDC. Both sa black shirts at saka sa black na mug. At pag nakuha nyo ng inyong PDC merch, either pics, shirts, mugs, bad94, eh, padala nyo lang ako ng picture through Facebook or Instagram para masali ko kayo sa future videos. Okay, hanggang doon na lang muna. Balik na tayo sa Perf Talk. And, and actually, think about this. America is... Uh, I'll use America, but Europe has the same. There's a lot of big cities in America. So America, if you... To, you know, like In Manila, there's Manila. In the Philippines, there's Manila, Cebu. Davao, plus, plus two or three. In America, you could go a full year playing every night in a big town that would pay you some good money. Uh, in Manila, in the Philippines, you cannot, unless you were corporate sponsors and all of that. But I mean, in America, on ticket sales and people just coming into a venue and paying money to see you, it can happen. Yeah. Then plus the merch sales and all that then. Yeah, you add that in. I mean, so it's not, this model works there more than anywhere else. Really, you know, I mean, it's like printers, you know, uh, printers, computer printers. They can give the printer away. They make the money on the ink. ink. (laughs) On the ink. (laughs) So give your freaking album away, but you make your money on tour. Now, if you stock live, (laughs) 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 you gotta make it it work. Yeah. Yeah, or like nowadays, it's it's all about merch, then. Eh? It's like you know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, sure. You uh, if you buy a shirt, it's like buying fifteen download. You know. Yeah. Or streaming three thousand times, or or five, 
30,000 streams. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, I, I've spoken to guys who are very nostalgic. Oh, it's nice to open the records. Like, I'm not a vinyl guy by any stretch. I, I, I don't like vinyl. I mean, I, I liked it when it was there, but I, I really much prefer where we're at now. I, where, where I can pull up my friends. Uh, in, on on my phone at the you know quickly then listen to what they what they're singing. I, I don't really care for vinyl, but a lot of people are really into it, and I'm like, and hey, go for it. But that's not my trip. But it always amazed me in on the business side, and, and look at this. This is something no one no, I don't, no one ever talks about. Remember when we went? We were at uh, we our time was CDs and cassettes. Before us was LPs and cassettes. Before that was like cartridges. A eight track, yeah. Eight track and then LPs, yeah. right? Or and the LPs per team was always there. Then eight tracks came in at some point. Now think about this: man. every time you changed format, you sold your entire catalog again. Do you know how many times the Beatles have sold all their albums? They sold it all on eight track. They sold it all on LP. They sold it all on CD. They sold them all again in cassettes. Well, that's that's why we're not, and then in CDs. That's why they're one of the Again, highest I mean, high selling ones. Exactly. I, and I remember Wally Chamsai telling me this. He goes, he goes, your first initial sales are great. No worries, that's fine. But the money is in your catalog that's going to sell for the next 30, 40, 50 years. That's the money. Man. And every time you change format, you sell your catalog again. <laughs> it's a fresh freaking sale. Yep. And so, and this is what bugged me about um, the whole MP3 thing. All the record companies and all of them, I guess maybe they were too big and fat and lazy and comfortable in their wealth and power that they did. They felt the system should have adapted to them and they they should not have to adapt to the system and they failed to realize mp3s was just another format that you could use to sell your entire catalog again and now look now it's gone and now you have streaming you've sold your entire catalog again and there's going to be something else that's going to replace that and you're going to sell your catalog again so why fight it use it bro yeah, and, it's, it's like and I always felt Sony was Sony was the worst offender. You know why? They invented the portable music player. They invented the Walkman. They had the technical capability to do it, and they didn't so follow they through. Been on the forefront. They didn't. They, I mean, when you talk about missing the boat, they they were the biggest offender. And so who who won Apple and and Spotify, a computer company and an app when Sony had it? Sony had everything to rule. They had it all, but they, you see, perspective is everything, man. If you just have to look at it correctly and and, and, and look look how badly they missed out on that. Yeah, and, and, and you shouldn't take it personally then, you know, like. No, of course not. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like you're you're diminishing my, my music's value. <laughs> no, it's, it's. <laughs> You just no, man. put put your put, put your value somewhere else and, and and then use it in a different way. No, I mean, look, this is what I want to say, and I know, I know that was, you're diminishing my music's value by paying less for it. But and I would say to that, I'm listening to your music. I'm not diminishing it at all. I'm appreciate. Doesn't matter the value. What I paid for it doesn't matter. The fact that I'm enjoying it is what matters. And I think that's you have to come from that from that area and i value it because i like it i don't value it because it cost me money you know what i'm saying it's like you know how you used to buy a cd and i'm like oh, this thing sucks but i spent spent ten dollars <laughs> so i'm gonna really pretend to like it yeah you can't man yeah but, um if you like a song and you appreciate it the value that's where the value comes in you know this whole model of selling your every time the format changes you're able to sell your your product basically over and over again that only works for music it doesn't work for anything else yeah like films how many times you're gonna watch the same movie books how many times you're gonna read the same book right <laughs> but how many times you're gonna listen to stairway to heaven baby <laughs> there you go. every freaking day come on <laughs> you, you know what i'm saying yeah yeah Right? Well, it's music you will listen to and consume the same damn thing over and over and over again until you die. There's value in that. There's something in that. And imagine it changing format. That's just a way to ingest. It's just an ingestion mechanism. That's all that is. Right? <laughs> incredible man. that's all I, and i can't believe these guys can't figure it out and here i am some dude in the philippines so far removed from all this and you're tommy matola sitting up there up in the tower of new york city in sony office and you you, you didn't get that you didn't figure that out what's the matter with you <laughs> i don't know 
No, Unbelievable. Yeah, they're too uh, too attached to the hardware. Yeah, no, I think it was there. It was a lot of arrogance and a lot of. Did you watch that show with that Mick Jagger produced with the one about the rock scene in the seventies, the music scene in the seventies? Mm, I'm not sure which one that is. Ah, it was a good. It was a good. You know, it was uh It was basically about rock and roll in the seventies. That whole scene. Okay, I I have to figure it out. Uh, I, I, God, me, I, I, I want to look it up. Um. <laughs> Although I w- I will say about the vinyl experience because like you know it, it's the hip thing now. My my kids went to downtown LA and went record hunting. Yeah. <laughs> you know these wow. <laughs> they right. went so uh, they came home with a box of records like random stuff mostly classical and yeah. but actually speaking of that the series was called vinyl. Oh okay oh, okay right. I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out. Okay, but anyway, so they came they came down da- came back with a box of vinyl, mostly classical music. But they there's a record there. It's called uh, Something Something and World War Two. Wow. Okay. And it's a it's a soundtrack to like a collage or a, a documentary about World War Two set against Beatles music. Step against Beatles music. Yes, yeah, set set against really? Beatles in soundtrack yeah. And then and then the the and, and then the artists on the soundtrack is like the London Symphony Orchestra with wow. Elton John, Peter Frampton, Bee Gees. This was before the the Sgt. Pepper's movie. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and yeah. then and then uh, Tina Turner singing Come Together, dude. <laughs> <laughs> wow, imagine how incredible that was. You know, so so I mean, there's stuff on vinyl that you 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 know that's probably part of the charm of those hunting for them, of finding gems yes. like this. You know, and then we we looked it up. the The CD is 99 bucks if you can get it, because <laughs> you can't you can't find it anymore. No, you can't even find yeah. it anymore. The main charm of uh, having music on physical things. Is that you yeah. are more? It involves you somewhat, you know. Yes, yeah, I hear that. Yeah, you go, you go, you go to the record. You put, you put the needle down, you listen, yeah. and then after you're, you're, you're invested. Yeah, you're invested, and and you're you're part of the process. As opposed to, ngayon you pull up Spotify, you play, you hit shuffle, and then you leave it there, and, and then then you do other things, and then that yeah, that's you just type like in it. a couple of things, click it in, and it's there. Yeah, and actually. That, you know, you know what I learned this? It is funny. I was um we were revamping our company website many years ago. Dude. This is maybe 15 years ago, 10 years ago, 10 to 15 years. And I sat down with these young IT. This is the this is the first meeting where I was the old dude and I had young people. <laughs> okay. Like, you know, young uns there, you know, all technology te- technologically advanced, whatever. And and here I am thinking I'm pretty hip, right? So I come with my iPad. <laughs> notes on my iPad and these two come with pen and paper on a note and I go so we had the meeting everything was good and we discussed all technical details of the website and how you know I needed things to be in all of this and so we had all this discussion and at the end I and I asked the girl I go hey I just you know I just find it funny you're the IT people and I'm you know I'm a tobacco guy and yet I've got the iPad and you guys are writing stuff down that's weird you're supposed to be like technically advanced and she goes well we found that if you write it down, you retain. Yeah, no, that's true. The information better, and so parang it's just like you know that. So it's like the same. It's like by putting the record, doing you're more involved as a human being. It seems to mean more to you. It becomes a ritual. Doing, yeah, like you're doing stuff. It's not so flippant. It's like the on my YouTube channel, I have a couple of tutorials, the music theory tutorials. I shot that with pen and paper, you know. And I, mean you shot it with pen and paper. Well, no. I mean, I mean, you wrote everything. Down. I wrote everything down instead of having uh, graphics on the screen. Because I didn't, right, I don't right. know how to do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. So I just had two cameras, one fo- fo- pointed at my face, and then the other one pointed at the at the piece of paper. No, that's fantastic. And and then I I I asked everybody, you know, okay, grab a notebook and follow along, and then you can you can you know. You right. know. And that's exactly why I well what, later on, that became my uh, reason for doing it. I said, I, I it, think it's great. You'll retain yeah. it. My singer does that. the The band I'm in, he sings over forty songs per when whenever we play a set, we yeah. play, play a gig. Forty songs from memory. No, no, no paper. No, cool, no cheats. Man. Yeah. And what he does is he writes the lyrics down as as he's learning it. And then you remember it because yeah. you wrote them down. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. used to do that. That was my trick when I would take math when I would have a big exam. 
because so I'm an engineering major, so a, a heavy math, right? Before going in, I would what I would do is I'd memorize all the formulas, and I would I would go up to my teacher. I go, hey, I'm gonna write all the formulas down just so you know, okay? So I don't think I'm like cheating or anything. I would go to the back page. The first thing I would do, I'd open the exam when the exam started. I would switch to the back page, and I would write all the formulas down on the back page. Then I would just refer to them later as I needed them. But I more often than not, I didn't need to because I knew them. Write them down. A lot. That's how we'd memorize them. I would just keep writing them down. I would, you know, it's like muscle memory, almost. Well, it's, 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 you're writing it on paper, but you're actually inscribing it in your brain. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. That's something, you know, like, okay, like I read, but I read, I, I, I like reading on the Kindle app because, you know, so I don't have to store books and whatever. And then sometimes there's an audio book function that I can use so I can go to my car and it continues. You know, I, I kind of like that. But there's something about a physical book. Yeah, yeah. So, so flipping you know, the page. If I, yeah. if I, but but I don't I don't stick too much uh, on like with vinyl. Don't get me wrong, I vinyl's great. I personally don't think it sounds much better. It only sounds as good as your amp. If your amp is good, it, it'll sound better. <laughs> I'm not. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. It's not the sound that gets you with the vinyl. It's, it's the it's, rich. I think you're right. It's, it's, the, it's the ritual. It's the experience. The whole thing, right? <clears throat> in our terms, it's us grabbing the guitar and then plugging it in, plugging it in your pedal board, flipping the amp on. Play, playing through a, a real amp and not playing through a computer. That's, that's, that's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Fe gotta, feeling the sound under your fingers, you know? Exactly, man. You gotta have that real... Gotta be something real. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you watch that movie? I think it was Wally. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the 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 little robot. The little robot with right? the with the uh, overly fat people. Like everybody's fat and they're living in a virtual. Everything's plugged in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think about it. If that's you can't. You have to. You have to have something. You gotta get your gotta get your hands dirty. Put in. That reminds me of a, an Archie comic I read. Uh, dude, the Archie comics, diba? Right? Uh, I was I was a kid. I was you know we. That was, parang ang eksena is they go to the future. Right, and then the future guy shows Archie around, and then and then everybody was in a seat with with vi with you know whatever. That's my headphones, me ganon. How accurate, no? Yeah, that was inside. Oh, what are they doing? Oh, um, pleasing sounds are being fed directly into their brain and their cortex and all that, and then, so that wow. they can enjoy music and everything and and art and all that. Yeah, and then Archie goes, "That's cool, but." Nobody's grooving. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It doesn't. It, nobody looks like they're grooving. <laughs> so exactly. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. And, and you hit it on the. You hit the nail on the head when you say things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this was like for, foreshadowing. I mean, it's a, we we didn't get the flying cars. <laughs> <laughs> but we yeah, right? but but we got we got we got the the injected music and stream <laughs> and streaming <laughs> and streaming well, the flying cars the lang was okay, right? <laughs> yeah and, and this is supposed to be the year that there should be like uh, flying cars and hoverboards and jetpacks right yeah the next the next two three years we're supposed to be seeing all these guys are getting the releases also, yeah it's all gonna be coming uh, that's yeah. gonna be great which uh, that comes here that'll be awesome man. <laughs> I mean oh my when you're ready for new pedal day, use discount code GCPERF10 at gcrockboard.com to get 10% off your entire order. You can use the code multiple times and there is no expiration date. Enjoy. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you for your pet lick. What's your like All right. favorite uh, pet I lick? I can't say I have a pet lick. I mean, I, I, I think I have licks that I play. Or, or the Tirso uh, Ripoll lick, the, the quintessential. <laughs> <laughs> That I that I normally you know default to, but I don't know, man. I think it's more of a of a of a style of being. Oh, okay. oh by the way, dude, I found this thing. Manuel turned me on. So this thing, what's that? So you know, I I got the Volto, you know, which yeah, is yeah, like yeah, the, the pedal bank, board, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bags. But then you can buy this thing that makes any power bank do the same thing. It's great. So it's like a, a voltage up from five volts to nine. Yeah, it's brilliant. Nice, nice. And it costs like three hundred pesos. <laughs> As opposed to ninety nine dollars, bro. <laughs> nice. It looks great. So like, like any old power bank will do it, you know. And and that's enough to power the. Dude, it can power the fly rig, power my, you know, my my pedal. Not the oh, obviously this amp's plugged in, but you know, it's all good, man. <laughs> 
I don't have a pet lick, man, but I just sort of have some. Just, I don't know. It's just stuff the way. It's just playing the way I play. I, I do learn. I, I learned a couple of things where you you come in from the a half step down, right? So normally you would go, but you can go. You know what I mean? You you, you have that little extra. Then. You know those little in between bits. That that was something I've picked up over the years, which which I always do, and I do enjoy. Oh, you're in, you're in, you're in B E flat now. Yes, yeah, because we're you know. We're, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're working with Kev, so it's. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so let's do let's do that half step thing. Wait, my wireless is going off. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> this I love these things though. By the way. Yeah, yeah. These little guys. The X5. I know, I love them, but anyway. Uh, I, I I could have sworn I charged it. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like a, it's it's just a, um, I don't know. It's like a little, it it the in between, right? And then you just go down chromatically. <laughs> Ah, ah, okay, okay, that's cool. It's, it's... <laughs> the E flat is throwing yes. me off. <laughs> ah. You were doing something like yeah, the, the it, chromatic. It's, it's basically it, it's it's the pentatonic scale, but you hit the notes in between. between. Okay. Yeah. So. You know, I mean, it's just. It's the same thing, but you just go instead of going. You go. Then you, you get to use more fingers. Yeah, <laughs> you just go. It, it, it gives it a little more of a kickapoo. But the, the important thing to remember is that you, you still land on the pentatonic shape, basically. Oh, yes, right? yes, yeah. yeah. These are all little passing things, and it's um, it's like a dovetailing in a way. You just sort of. It, Smooths it out, gives it a bit of a swagger. <laughs> that, that was one of my, that was one of my things. <laughs> yes. yeah. Exactly that. Nice, nice. And then, but well, uncle it, you know, it yeah, yeah. You, it, it, it makes it a little, you know. Yeah, it's it's a, it's, 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 a it's a different. It's a like a. Uh, it's like spice. <laughs> yeah, it's like spice, and it's great. And so I, I like that. It adds, it adds to it. Yeah. One thing I also take, get from your playing is you, you, you do a lot of like repeated notes. Yeah, I, I try to get a theme going, and I try to be. I, I, I play like I'm singing, so it's like, um, it's, it's memorable. So you kind of get a theme, and you revisit it, and you go back to it. See, I, I seem to gravitate towards that. I think it just makes things more. Uh, memorable and it makes it, it it stays with you longer. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Can like sort of. can, can can you show me something like? Yeah. You know, so it's like when you sing, it's like you're saying you're not saying the same thing, but you're you're using the same voice, I guess. You're you know in the same tone. I remember you do you do a lot of like. Yeah. It <laughs> is something like that. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, there. there. Especially yeah, the, right. the the neck pick <laughs> neck pick up on the V, right? Parang woman tone. Yeah. The, the woman tone. <laughs> woman tone. <laughs> That was, uh, that's a trick I was, I've been into for a bit too. Is um oh, it slides. Yeah, it's fun, man. And then you like skip skip a few steps. So it's... 
know what I mean? Like, so it's it's like you're playing slide but without the slide. Yeah, and then um, instead of going, you go. Big, bigger jumps. Yeah, it adds a it's a, it adds a nice spacey dimension. But it's a trick that I've done every now and again, and it works. You know, this reminds me of. Uh, remember the time we recorded uh, "Roadworthy Man"? Yeah, that was good we were <laughs> we were four four of us were in the same room. Yeah, tapos Manuel Manuel and I were in uh, E flat. Tapos kaya ni Dave naka standard. Right. And then and then uh, I think I think I went. Oh, you need a tuner. You want to retune? And then, <laughs> do you remember what you said? No. Okay. What you said was, you were you were like uh, you were like chiding Dave. Like, what? You can't play in E flat. <laughs> you can't play in E flat without retuning. <laughs> Yeah, I was just doing that, and I'll tell you why I was doing that. Because uh, we did a Joey Ayala session about a week earlier, where he did the same thing to me. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to tune my guitar, and he's like, "Why you can't play?" <laughs> I just went and went after him. <laughs> Okay, it was funny that we kaya kaya pina nindigay na lang. So you guys were in standard, kami <laughs> really flat. And then we were, but we were playing in flat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so this reminds me of that because now the table has turned. <laughs> Ikaw yung nakai flat, right, nakai standard. Right. <laughs> I would normally normally I would work in standard, but Kevin works in E flat, so we kind of record everything in E flat. So when we pass it over, it doesn't cause issues. But like I mentioned, I'm teaching my daughter how to play guitar, so I have to keep that in standard. You know. But what's funny is so. Maybe you can you can uh, advise me on this. So I'm teaching my daughter how to play guitar. So what I've done was I start with the simplest songs, two chords. So uh, Fleetwood Mac Dreams, Horse with No Name, you know, really simple stuff. It's just, just two chords, and you know, you, you, so now she knows the bar chords and this basic, you know, stuff. Like that. And and we normally play a, along with. I have a Spotify playlist with all the songs that you know she wants to listen, learn, or the ones I want her to learn, and for instruction, and she plays along with it. Some of those are of in different, like in flats, because they're tuned down. And so I'm not going to make her tune. I'll just make her, you play it in flat. And then I realized that's going to make her not be afraid of flats and sharps. And now she can play in A flat, right? Because it doesn't bother her because she's played it before. So I'm thinking, I'm just going to keep that. That sounds like a good strategy. And then, and then later on, tell her about the, the, the different tunings. Yes, yeah, of yeah, course. Later I mean, on. There's always theory inside. Like, okay, she obviously knows A and A flat, the difference. Scale, well, well, upon scale, so it's all rhythm first, uh, all of that. Then eventually open chords and then the scale theory and soloing and all that. But so for her to go, so, so, so like one song she's learning is the KKK took my baby away by the remotes. That's in A, but the recording's in A flat, but she's got to play it in A flat, right? And so, it, and there's quite a bit of movement. But then she she can do it, and so she knows it. So it's all good. So, but I'm gonna keep that strategy. That's good because when when I when my son learned guitar, I wasn't very hands on. Like in the beginning, I would teach him like, oh, these are the notes. This is how to read. Here's the book. This is how to read the book. And and uh, you learn yeah. this, and then well, I'll meet you next week. We'll we'll we'll. And then, but for the most part, I left him to his own devices. No? Yeah. And then if I watch him. If I hear him practicing and then it sounds like he needs help with something, then I step in and then I correct that. Yeah. And then yung story mo is like he, when he started learning stuff on his own by ear, you know, he was picking up this uh, ani- you know, anime themes and all that and leads and all that. Yeah, so, that's cool. So he, he, recorded, him, he, he recorded himself playing. Tapos nun, I, I was noticing, ba naka E flat ito ah. Yeah, but he was playing, <laughs> but he was in standard. He was, but he, he, hit, he hit everything perfectly. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. that's great. Yeah, and yeah, that's great. And that, then that's uh, yeah, but but then okay. after that, I told him, I told him, well, you know, there there are some bands tuned down. <laughs> Cause yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> like you know, there was one lick that he couldn't figure out. Parang open 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 string pull off. You know that stuff. All oh, right, that, yeah. that stuff. You can't you, right. you can't you can't you can't There's fake no that. Way. There's yeah. no way. So I told yeah. him about that, and he goes, "Oh, okay, kaya yeah, pala but, uh, right. but one time he had a gig. He, he he got a gig. A local choir needed a guitar player, you know. So he went. It was offered to me. So I said, I feel weird playing with a bunch of kids. Do you mind if I yeah. let my son take the gig instead?" 
Oh yeah. Said, awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. That that works. That works out. And then they were rehearsing, and well, I, I was just, I know, I was just dad. I was, I was just, you know, waiting for him. <laughs> That's uh, uh, the pianist goes. I, I think we need to move this up a key, you know, or you know, trans yeah. transpose it. Oh, and then and then he just goes, oh okay, uh, like how many steps, you know, maybe a like, nice. like a, a whole a whole step, okay. Okay, let's okay, let's do it. And yeah. then they then, and then they, they run through it and he plays it perfectly. And That's then, great. And then they're, they're, they're not a music teacher like, oh yeah, like on the piano it, it it takes me a while to get the to get the transposition, but it's it's yeah. good. That, and he goes, yeah, yeah, I just move this from here to here, and and I'm good. <laughs> yeah. But if you told me that at some point, I'd be like, dude, come on. <laughs> That's like a for the powers dude you gotta sweat <laughs> you gotta figure everything out so, and, and so that I realized I, I, I wanna you know you, you wanna be able to give them that confidence or help them develop that like it don't matter the dots don't matter yeah yeah I, I remember like when I was a kid if I if I heard something uh Like the the first time I tried learning always with me always right. with you I did not believe that it was in the key of B. <laughs> it was like uh, no no in the B and C and <laughs> baka mali lang yung right, yeah, but mali lang yung recording. Right. <laughs> so all the all the difficult and chords then, so D B F <laughs> F sharp diba? B flat it's like ne 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 mali yan ne ni tama yan. <laughs> I know, but the thing I was just doing down a half step. <laughs> you know, but you know, but some songs they they actually play <laughs> in the in the weird keys. Yeah, I, I mean that part of it, I, it's it's always it's always funny. And but that for me it depends on the singers. Uh, at this point, if the singer likes it in E flat, fine. If you prefer standard, no worries. You know, I mean, string tension was an issue. A long time ago, at this point, not really. Nah, yeah. no. Actually, ah, so. it, it works to your advantage. It's easy, easier to play. <laughs> yeah, it's so good, you know. Yeah. If you enjoy kayo dito sa video, pa kaya bigyan lang ng thumbs up, like, tirahin yun na yung subscribe button at bagtingin yung malit na kampanya. I also remember uh, one of your visits to the studio. You were you had a banduria, <laughs> tune yeah, to, tune like, tune to guitar tuning. <laughs> yes, that's cool. I don't know where that is. Yeah, and, and then you're awesome. doing like country stuff. Yeah. Do you still but, do that? Nah, I mean, I try, but I can. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Can 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 you see your can you see how you're picking that? It's uh, just these three. Okay. It's really just these three. Yeah, your ring finger is going to be on the B string, and then your middle finger will be on the G, and the pick is on the D or on the bass strings. And then you go back. That's that's the feel that I can never get. Yung... Yeah, the country. Uh, where did you pick that up from? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. That that's the that it's, little that little tick it tick it down tick it down. Yeah, it's that that, it's that eludes in, me. That eludes me. I know it's just little in between stuff. I don't know. It's uh, I don't know. You pick stuff up. <laughs> pick it up over the I'm not a blues guy per se. I'm not a traditional. I'm not a heavy. I love the blues. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not a disciple of the blues. I, I'd be, 
I would be lying if I said I was, and I would I would be misrepresenting myself. I appreciate it a lot, but I am by no means a disciple of it. I mean, I'm not that good at it, to be honest. I mean, I can do what I do, but I I, I respect it a lot. But I, I think I got because of you know like um like I said, one of my biggest influences was Peter Green. So that yeah, yeah that's the blues part. That's the blues that I that I zero in on, and that's sort of the default that I would that would be what I would aspire to that. Not Muddy Waters or not those guys, you know. I don't know what that makes me, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> you know, I'm sure a pur- purist would find that quite offensive. I really don't care. Yeah, I, I love yeah. I love Peter Green. I love Eric Clapton. That's the blues I like. That style of playing, that that swagger, and that the way they carry themselves when they play, the the, the way they're playing uh, comes through. That I that's what I like, and and that's probably what I aspire uh, to be like. So that's maybe the best way to, for me to, uh, how do I say, uh, uh, to, to uh, describe my approach would be to be that way. I want to be like that. In the end, you have to be you. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and it is. You know what? You know what I discovered? So check this out, right? This is the... Right, so this is this effect pedal Manuel got me. And this is the fly rig. Sounds the same. It's like I'm just, I'm, it's like, it, like it doesn't matter what I get. I just keep trying to sound the same. So, <laughs> so I think after a while, you just sound like yourself. You keep doing it long enough and it'll just sound like you. Don't matter what you need, what equipment you use. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There's a little Korean store that opened around the corner from my house. And they were selling this Korean kombucha. The dude from BTS said that was his favorite. Kombucha wiped out. <laughs> All these people from BF came and they wiped her out. And now they're selling it for like 300 pesos per sachet. And my wife's all upset. She's like, I just wanted a bit of kombucha in this BTS. <laughs>